All right, so let's talk about today's agenda. So we're going to start by talking about like, what's the point, right? Why why blogs? Why do people blog? And specifically, why do you want to blog? Um, we're going to talk about like what your blog's niche might be as well. So what it's it's very specific topic, what makes you stand out from the rest. Um, we're going to touch briefly on making money with your blog um, and, and ways that people have done that in the past. And we're going to generate some ideas so that whenever you sit down to write your blog, whether that is a personal blog, something for your business or something in between, um, you will never be faced with a blank screen and unsure of what to write. So we're not going to cover how to set up your blog. So we didn't cover this last week. Uh, we covered this like last month. Um, so you can definitely find that in the recording court, uh, recorded sessions. We also have a lot of WordPress basics. So if you're super, super brand new, um, we've got courses there. Um, we also have courses on block theme development, which I'm also posting in the chat, either one of these will get you started, like actually with the setup of your blog. So we're not, we're not covering that today. Today is all about overcoming that writer's block. So you're going to need one of two things, either access to Google Docs um, or a word processor or a place to write down your ideas. So a notebook, a word processor. Um, I don't know if you want to write on your desk, <laughs> probably don't do that. Former teacher, don't write on desk. It's not not a good place, or just like a notes program on your cell phone. So we're going to be using this Google Doc today to help us to brainstorm. So I'm going to drop this in the chat. And now you are going to have two options. So you can either go over here to file. And if you use Google, you have a Google Drive, you can click this make a copy button. Or if you have a word processor on your computer, uh, there is a download button and you can download it to whatever you would like here. So whether you have Microsoft Word, an open document, if you just want to use a plain TXT file, um, you can download it there. But this will help us to brainstorm and this will be the resource that you keep uh, forevermore. Or if you have just like a random piece of paper or notebook, you can just write it on here either way. Um, yeah, so this is what we're going to be using today and talking about each one. Any questions on that? Any trouble finding this document? Again, you'll go to file, either make a copy or download. I am going to make a copy because I don't want to write on this one as well. So here I go. Copy of Overcoming Writer's Block. I'm going to title this Burger to Travel. <laughs> That's what my blog topic is going to be, and we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> so now you can see I have my specific organizer here. I can, you should now be able to type in this if this is yours. Um, yeah, doesn't look like we have any questions yet. So when you are ready, you've made your copy, you have your pen and paper, please type ready into the box, or you can do an emoji, uh, as I think I pronounced Ruachal did. I apologize if I mispronounce that. Um, but let me know when you're ready and we will get started. I see Jean's ready. I think it's Michelle is ready. Ready, ready. Yes. Okay. That's three readies. Do say wait, stop if you need me to do so and I will be happy to slow it down. Okay. So the first thing that I would like you to do, um, I've already talked about this, but we're going to start by just writing down our blog's topic, and then we're going to talk about why people blog. So for me, I'm going to, this is number one, your blog's topic. What will your blog be about? So that's one of the questions that I asked you when you were signing up. If you have changed your answer since then, that's totally fine. Um, but what is your blog going to be about? And this will just help you to find it later. So for me, one of the things that I'm blogging about right now is RV travel with birds. <laughs> I think I accidentally muted myself. So my mine is just okay. Interesting. So just start by writing your topic in there. It can be as specific as as that. For some reason, I keep getting muted. I'm not entirely certain why. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. Do let me know if I don't notice, though. I'm sure you hear some birds in the background. That may be why. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, so this can be just as general as travel. This can be just whatever your topics are. You can also list multiple. I recommend just starting with one. And if you're, you'd like to share, if you'd care to share, you can drop it in the chat. So I'm blogging about RV, travel with birds. And if you've blogged about anything in the past, you can drop that as well in there. Um, another one of mine is like teaching in open source is a blog that I once upon a time wanted to start, but haven't quite gotten there. Um, I also have a parrot blog, which is just about living with parrots. Um, but yeah, anyone want to share? Give you a minute to... Jot that down. Looks like we are a touch shy. That's okay. Let's start then by answering the question, like, why do people blog in general? So rather than writing in that organizer, let, let's share here first. Why do people blog? Whether it's you or somebody else, what is the point? Um, the first thing that I think of is to share experiences um, and to connect with people from all over the world. Um, it's one way that we feel connected to others. What are some other reasons? Go ahead and answer here in the chat box. You have information to share, yes, that others may find valuable. Why else do people blog? I think when I first started blogging, it was kind of a, a personal journal. I think I had like a, a Zanga or a live journal. <laughs> Any other reasons why people blog? Information that you share may become information that you learn. Yes, ah, in fostering a community on your blog, um, you can definitely discover what other people are doing as well. You may find better ways of doing things um, and discover that maybe the way that you were doing one thing isn't the way that you want to do it after all. That's great. I think another one that is pretty popular is that people will blog to make money, right? The idea of being a professional blogger um, appeals to so many people. I think that before there were influencers, there were bloggers. And then another person said, I have to learn blogging to share information about products and services for an affiliate program. Yes, we're going to talk about that today, actually. Um, and you also want to start a post a personal motivational blog next. Yes. Um, so, and the other thing that people should know uh, is that if you are starting a blog, it might be for your business. One of the ways that search engines, and Asad, you can definitely jump in here at some point, um, but one way that you can get listed higher in search engines is to have a business blog because updated content, um, having relevant, interesting content posted regularly is a very, very good way to keep your, your website up. Uh, up to date. That's one way that you can show that. <laughs> Entertainment. Yes, that's another reason talking about funny stuff that kids or pets did. Oh, there's so much connection there. Um, so does someone have a comment? Okay, so some of these reasons may uh, overlap with yours. Why do you want to blog? Um, we did just have a couple people hop in. So let's actually hop over to our graphic organizer. And I started writing on the wrong one, didn't I? Okay. So for those of you who are brand new, we are going to be working in this organizer. Um, so I want you to really explore just for a minute, why do you want to write this blog? Think about why you decided to start a blog or website. Think about the conversations you had, all the things that prevented you from doing so. And think about the moment you decided to like to join us here to get started. What changed or influenced you to take action? And then another question is probably what will happen if you don't start this blog? So I want you to take, eh, let's go with a minute and a half, and I'm going to set a timer here to write about why you want to write this blog. So I'm going to look for an online timer. I'm going to put a minute and a half. A quick start. And I want you to start writing a number two. Why do you want to write this blog? So I'm going to write with you. I'm going to mute myself so you're not hearing, <laughs> hearing birds, but your turn to write.
finish the sentence that you are on. If you would like to share, you can definitely copy and paste into the, the, um, the meeting chat so that we can kind of see where you are. You can see some of my reasons here. Um, I didn't answer what will happen if I don't write this blog. So for me, one thing that may happen if I don't write this blog is that other people who decide to travel with their birds may not have that resource and some birds may get sick, may be unhappy, may, I mean, for me, it's the difference between people and birds living their best lives in an RV and not living their best lives, not living maybe. So for me, it's a very personal mission as more and more people take to the road. I wanna make sure that we are all happy together. Um, one of our members said that they want to connect with people through writing and share something they can connect with and that will actually help them in some way. Oh my goodness. Uh, I bet everybody has a blog that changed them in some way, shape, or form. Um, maybe you can think of one if you want to share that. You absolutely can. Um, but I can think of some over the years where I read things. Um, like, for example, this is... <laughs> really personal, but like, for example, when I got divorced, there were a lot of relationship blogs out there that really spoke to, to me and got me through really hard times. So the things that you write now, um, you're leaving a legacy for other people to find their way through as well. <laughs> um, my idea is an accessibility blog. So many people do not take accessibility into an account when they create documents, post information, images, etc. Um, you've learned a lot attending meetups and webinars and would like to share this information with others. Oh my gosh. Yes. Ah, that's such a great blog idea. Please do that. There's so much we can do to make the web more accessible and starting a blog about it that, that helps us with actionable tips. Yes, absolutely. Um, and as far as like the name of my blog, I don't want to promote it. I will message you directly, um, <laughs> about the, the bird blog, um, just because I, I don't want to yeah, it's such a, a niche thing. So I will send that to you at the end of today's workshop, um, Michelle specifically. Okay, so just not sure how or where to start. So one thing that's exciting is that in doing this graphic organizer, you are starting. So let's start talking about your blog's niches. Um, so we already talked about some of these. We're going to talk about defining your niche. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little a, a story about a successful blogger. Um, so the first thing um, is that this successful blogger, the story that we're talking about is just travel bloggers. So when I say travel bloggers, what do you think about? Just drop it in the chat. Is it, does it excite you? Does it annoy you at this point? Like, are they everywhere? Are they nowhere? What's something that you think of? There's no wrong answer when you hear the word travel blogger. There we go. Sorry, I was typing. So some people say, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Other people are like, ah, that's not for me. I'm not interested in that. Living vicariously through others' experiences. So yeah, so I, once upon a time though, travel blogging wasn't really a thing. So like, we're going to go back like 10 years, 2013, 2014. Travel blogging wasn't really a thing. Um, but there were a couple of people at the time. Now I would say that a lot of people... Uh, are, are trying to become travel bloggers, right? Like it would be their dream to go off to exotic locations all over the world and, and share their experiences. But it's a really hard field to break into. Um, so you really want to have a niche for your blog. So for example, uh, my original blog was one about parrots, right? Birdie.blog, I, which I wasn't going to share, but then I just did. There it is. <laughs> um, but the more specific you can get, um, the more people are going to who who are looking for your topic um, can find that blog. So my partner uh, was a successful blogger for a long time, um, and he was a digital nomad. He worked from an RV, and that was that was his niche, right? Because in 2013, 2014, it was really hard to be connected to the internet. It was really hard. Like remote work wasn't all the rage that it is now. Um, so because they were he and his then partner were traveling. Um, that was their niche. They were working and traveling 
in an RV that they rebuilt from scratch. So having a niche is really important. Knowing, hey, who is your audience? Who's looking for it? And getting specific. Um, you really definitely want to be specific about who your audience is. Um, so their niche was they rebuilt an Airstream and then they add and wrote about different systems. Um, and because of the way they were writing, they was consistent. They had great ideas. They were you know, sharing about their experiences. They started receiving things uh, that were just given to them for free. So for example, they were sent an air conditioner for their RV that they were then able to write an honest review about. Um, they started receiving discounted items, water heaters. Uh, I think they got tires maybe. But because of the consistency, because they had built this audience, um, they started getting items sent to them. Um, and then they started being paid for content. So they were paid for content about um, other products, right? So people would say, hey, you've used X thing. I would like you to write about it. And because they wrote about it, they, were, and they ended up getting paid for that. Um, and then they ended up doing something entirely different with WordPress. Um, that water heater that I mentioned, um, they ended up creating a WordPress website and selling them to make money. So what started as we are just writing about something we're passionate about turned into, hey, people respect us, they trust us, and we've got a, a wide enough reach that people are willing to pay us for our ideas. So that's one of the main drivers. Um, for people to, to build a blog. Um, and they learned how to use WordPress in different ways. So <laughs> they made money a different way. So I want you to think about your niche, right? So at the time, like travel blogging now wouldn't necessarily be a niche, which is part of why I'm writing about traveling with birds, right? I don't just want to write about travel. I want to write about what it's like to do so with two big parrots and three little tiny ones. Um, so that th that's what their niche was remote work, DIY, doing it, like tra traveling with three dogs, like they did quite a bit. So head to your organizer now and think about what will make your blog stand out among similar topics. What's your end goal? What does this look like, especially for your readers? Take a minute and 30 seconds to write. Finish the sentence that you are on. All right. So one of the questions I ended with was, could I get more specific? So this document is a living document. You are welcome to work on it just in this session or later. But as I was, was writing, I realized, wow, I've got two sets of parrots, big ones and little ones, and they both need different things. So I may want to get more specific depending on what the need is out there. Just think about what your niche is. So a lot of the times when people are writing, they don't just they don't just want to write for funsies. They want to make the impact. Sometimes they want to make money. So we're going to talk briefly about how you can make money with your blog. So this, I mean, there are a couple of things you've got to do first and foremost, right? Like one, 
you need to post regularly to you need to be trustworthy obviously you don't just want to regurgitate things that are already out there um and you also need to uh like build your credibility so i mean and, and most of that is done um i'm just writing this in the chat so one post regularly two be trustworthy three be fresh and original so that helps you to build an audience that trusts you so that's step one. So before you can do that, that, that's something to keep in mind. But it's a good idea to think about where you might go from there. So the first thing when we're thinking about money, like eventually um, you want to think about like what you might be able to, to do for affiliate links. So does anyone, can anyone tell me what are affiliate links and how do they make you money? Does anyone know the answer to this question? Promoting someone else's product to my blog and earn commission for each sales. Okay, so it is definitely related to that. Yes, Asad. Um, so you're promoting somebody else's product. You're not selling stuff out of your back room over here. You are promoting somebody else's product. But there are programs that go even further than that. Can anyone name one? Does anyone know? I'm going to start Googling it. And if you answer before me, great. Yes, Jean, that is exactly right. So there are all kinds of links, products, blogs. Um, you get the commission if someone buys the thing. So you may have seen some blogs that are like, hey, like if you buy X product over here, like I'm talking about using a certain spice in my cooking, or maybe I am using an instant pot or a certain pan. Cooking blogs are notorious for this. Um, if you click the link from their blog, um, and someone buys from that link, you get a very, very small percentage um, of that sale. So let's say that I have a cooking blog and I have signed up for lots of, like there are tons of different affiliate programs. I think the most common one is Amazon. Um, if anybody knows a couple more than that, um, but what they do is it, it links out to a different product. Um, so for example, if I'm thinking about this, wealthy affiliate might be one, yes. Um, but uh, if you're familiar with Amazon, there is an affiliate program there. And this is just an example. There are lots out there. Affiliate links, Amazon for blogs. Um, at least they used to. Am I, am I at a date here? I don't think so. Oh, yeah, here we go. There's an Amazon affiliate program. It's weird that it's not. <laughs> there are lots of resources here that can teach you how to do that. But basically, there's a very specific URL that's generated for you. Um, apparently Elementor has an affiliate pro program. Yes. Um, but one thing that I've learned, like if I wanted to sell through Amazon specifically, and I'm not selling any of my products, um, one thing that I know of that I really like, uh, for my birds is called Bird Street Bistro. So you can definitely search for this and say, Hey, does this exist here? This is something that I use at home on the road all the time. Like, I'm not trying to do an endorsement for them now. I'm just trying to give an example of an affiliate. I might say, Hey, Amazon, I have you know, thousands of people come and visit my blog about parrots. If I can get just a hundred of them to regularly buy this through my link, the small cents to the dollar that I would make from having done that does add up over time. If I have a thousand of them that every month from the, you know, tens of thousands of people who might visit my blog, that is money there. So like that, that's what this next section is about is thinking, hey, what are some products that you might be able to see if you could do affiliate links for? So you can search through Amazon, you could look through Elementor, but like basically with affiliate links, what are some products you might be able to link to and make some money? And again, if you're just starting your blog, you don't want an affiliate link program yet because if only like 10 people are, are visiting, that's not going to add up to much. Uh, first, you need to build your audience, but this is fun to think about. Um, we do have a question. Is it's important to post articles regularly? How do you manage your time to write multiple blogs and how often do you publish new posts for each blog? Ooh, good question. Let's hold that to the end because I think that we will have time to get to that and we will talk about time management and... Uh, the question that is... Uh, it's important to post your multiple blog. How often uh, you public new posts for your blog? So it's important to post. We're going to talk about content in, at, at the bottom. I think that we will be able to answer that question over time. 
So that's the first thing. Start thinking about what are some products you might be able to link to and like maybe make some money like that. If you get enough people, if you have enough people on your blog, that could be a really good thing. Um, so the other thing that is important to think about, woo, so I get for switching, I need to switch windows. So the other thing that can happen is if you have a good following, you can get paid to review products. So you might think about with your blog, are there products or items that you use a lot that help with what you're doing? Um, who might be interested in what you have to say about their products? Um, the other thing you can think about are paid guest blogs. So there are going within your niche, there are going to be other blogs that exist um, that are, are credible. Um, you definitely want to be, you want to find what those blogs are. And at some point you may reach out to them and say, Hey, I want to write a blog on your blog. And then they link back to you and you link back to them. That's really good for SEO. And the last thing are ads, uh, who might be interested in advertising on your website. So I'm going to do this really quick, just to kind of model this, um, to, to think about this, um, just to demonstrate it. Uh, so you saw when I was looking at affiliate links, like the Bird Street Bistro, that was one of the ones that, oh, I'm writing on the wrong thing again. Whoops. Bird travel blog. So for affiliate links, um, I could think about like Bird Street Bistro. That was one product that I really liked. Um, I'm sure that there are parrot toys <laughs> that I could link to and be like, you absolutely need this parrot toy. Uh, there might be parrot carriers. Um, that I could link to, like all of these are probably things that I could find on Amazon or another affiliate product where I could just sign up for the, the thing. I don't even have to talk to that company. Um, so for the people who make Bird Street Bistro, I don't have to talk to them, um, but I could go through Amazon and maybe make some money by promoting that product. So that's an example of that. Um, another thing when I, when we think about paid product reviews, these are slightly different because these are blog posts about a product or item that you love. So one thing that I used in my RV, and again, this is not an endorsement, just an example, um, was something called a window. <laughs> and I'm just going to show you it so you know what I'm talking about. Um, windows are a seat that lives in your window that your bird can sit on and look outside. Um, so this is something that uh, I would probably want to write a paid product review about. So in order to do that, like this is just off the top of my head, right? Um, I love the window. So what I would probably do is if they didn't notice me initially, um, I might reach out to the creators of this product um, and see if they want me to endorse it. Um, the other thing I could do is let's say that they have a blog of their own. Um, I might, they don't, but if they did, I could definitely... Um, become active on their blog, on their social media. Um, and like, you wouldn't want to like plug your, your blog super hard, but you, you might be just say, Hey, like I have this bird blog and like, I really like your thing. Like, here's a link to that post. They may pay you for something like that. Um, I think paid guest blogs, that's, I mean, what is a list of other websites that are like yours that are slightly different though, that you might post on? And the last one, um, you might just think about like who might want to advertise on your website. So that's the other thing that I might do with, with the window, right? So they don't have an Amazon affiliate, like they sell directly through their website. So I might reach out to them and say, hey, do you want me to put a button like in my header, in my footer, in my sidebar on every page that says, hey, buy this window. Here's an ad that I made for you. Would you like this? That might be a way that you can do that. So just take another minute and 30 seconds. And think about your affiliate links. What are some things you might be able to get a commission on that you could endorse? Paid product reviews. Who might pay you to talk about the product? Things like that. So a minute and a half. I'm going to reset this. Just give it a minute. And go.
finish the sentence that you are on. I did add these ideas to the documents. Now I don't know much about them. So I, your mileage may vary. I don't know like what types of <laughs> programs these are. So definitely do your research, but for affiliates, as you're thinking about this and working on this going forward, consider searching through them. Like what might you be able to, to do this for later on? But again, you have to have a following first, but I like to keep this in mind because if you do have really popular blog posts and you're linking just in general to certain things, um, at some point, if you're like, wow, I'm getting a thousand visitors a month to my Bird Street Bistro post or a post that mentions it, that might be the time to go back and insert, like join the affiliate program and insert it So, uh, into that post. So just thoughts. Okay. Now let's talk about topics because I think that this might help to inform the question like, how do you manage your time to write multiple blogs and how often do you publish new posts for each blog? Um, so. Some of this is going to show you how you can manage your time, um, but we're going to brainstorm some topics first. So at this point, um, I want you to think about as many topics as come to your mind. So for this first brainstorm, there are no wrong answers. You're just going to come up with as many blog topics as you can think of. So if you're not sure where to start, that you're like, ah, oh, that's my problem. It's just a blank screen. I want you to ask yourself, what's something most people would be surprised by or get wrong about your topic? Um, the second one is you can always Google it. What does Google say about your particular topic? So if you're looking for ideas there, I'm just going to go to Google and say RVing with parrots is safe, worth it, legal. Those are some great blog topics right there. Um, let's see. And then the last one that I that can help you. Um, you can also use Openverse to look for related images. So openverse.org. I'm just going to look for Parrot RV. And we're going to see if I can find anything here and see if it inspires anything. So here is the link to Openverse. Any one of these things can help you. Uh, I'm going to give this a minute and a half. Jot down any ideas that come to mind. Nothing is wrong here. You can always pick the best ones later. So 30 seconds, we're at number five, and go. Finish the bullet point that you are on. Did anyone come up with anything like particularly exciting during this one? I'm just curious. Drop it in the chat. I think one that I hadn't ever thought of before for me was like, hey, like what, why shouldn't I just like board my bird? If I'm going to go away for two weeks on a trip, like, can I just like leave them at the vet's office? <laughs> Like, why not? Why do that? Pros and cons. Like, that's something new for me. Hey, Jean thought of a lot of topics. Great. Yes. 
sometimes just giving yourself permission to just like word vomit onto a blank piece of paper can can generate things. <laughs> None will make money though. Yeah. But it sounds like some of our blogs are passion projects, right? They make the world a better place. And that's probably more important than than anything. So, but you never know. Some of this will come to you later. So the next thing that we're going to talk about are other types of blogs. So when I think of a blog post, and I'm mistaken in this, apparently, when I think of blog posts, I think about just like long form articles, right? Like I think about the cooking blogs where like they tell you their life story and then give you a little recipe. <laughs> Um, and that that's exhausting to me, right? And I think that's exhausting to a lot of people. It's a reason that microblogging platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter um, are so popular. So you don't have to write 600 to 800 word things or a thousand word blog posts. They can be as short as 300 words. So for search engine optimization, one number that I found when I when I was researching for this was that recommended blog post should be at least 300 words in length. Um, and that not every bit of content must be 100% perfect for search engine optimization. Like you don't have to sit there and spend hours agonizing over it. Did I like throw keywords into this? Am I using the right searchable things? Consistency is probably more important. So you want to mix in some shorter posts as well. So you do have the option to write short form articles. So we're going to take a minute and a half. And I want you to think of like, look at your topics and just ask yourself what might be a good short form article, 150 to 300 words or less. Um, what, and they can be topics that are up here. Like you could just move them down here or you could generate new ones. But take a minute and a half and think, hey, what would make a really good short form article. Minute and a half, no ideas are wrong, get them out there. Finish the sentence that you are on or the bullet point. All right. So from my understanding, consistency is more important than having perfect 500 to 1,000 word articles. So if you, like not occasionally, but just you want to mix up your content a little bit, right? You don't just want to see the same 1,000 words or the same like super short 300 words, but that allows you to write a lot faster. So Asad, do you have anything else to, to add to that or is that is that correct? Just curious if there's anything else I should know. So Asad said, yes, a minimum of 300 words is good to go as long as it's adding value to well, I can the say readers. You're right. Uh, yes, as long as readers are uh, finding it amazing 
or it answers one of or two of their particular questions regarding a specific topic that works just really fine. I really like what you said about adding value. Um, everything that you do does need to add value to your readers. If you're just writing like random fluff, like if I'm just like, hey, here's a picture of my birds. <laughs> that's, I mean, that that's what more Instagram is for, I would say, than like a blog, right? Like my blog should be teaching somebody about something. It should be inspiring them. It should be, you know, encouraging to them to do something. So value adds are really important, but it doesn't have, you don't have to spend hours and hours writing blogs that way. So do keep that in mind. Um, for the sake of time, uh, your long form articles, I think a lot of what we probably wrote up here under brainstorm topics could fit there, but just some key points about it. These are longer essays. These are 500, 800, or even a thousand word posts. Um, make sure to break up your text into shorter paragraphs and you want to use headings appropriately and very paragraph length. Like this is all pretty common sense. This is probably what most of us think of when we think about um, long form articles, but uh, one thing that is really important that I'm going to give you to copy and paste into that is a resource on using headings um, because headings are really important for both accessibility, making sure everyone can find and understand your post, and it's also very good for search engine optimization to be ranked higher. So I want you to take this and I want you to stick this for later review, just for the sake of time, since it already exists, uh, into your long form articles, because that will teach you very quickly uh, how to write headings in a way that will best serve both you, your audience, and search engines. So highly recommend that when you're writing big, long essays, that resource that I just gave you is gold, and it will also make the internet a better place. Um, so do take that, do use that to break up your articles in a way uh, that makes sense. So I, I couldn't do it justice in the time that we have, which is why I'm giving you the video for it, um, rather than going deeply into it now. Yeah, so Elena, great question. Do you recommend to use AI such as ChatGPT to help create blog articles? So let's, um, I'm going to leave this up to you today because I do know a little bit about ChatGPT. Um, would you rather brainstorm some interviews? I, I think it's pretty self-explanatory and like, because like I can think about like bird people that I know that I could interview, vets, vet techs, uh, people who are groomers, my friends who own parrots, lots of people I could interview. Um, and I, I could generally understand listicles and letters. Shall we go into AI or would you rather spend our last 10 minutes brainstorming? What is more valuable to you learners? Okay, I see brainstorm. All right, tell you what, I will, if you're interested in chat GPT and you have time, uh, since we have a vote for brainstorm, um, we will spend some time talking about interviews and stuff, and we may talk about chat GPT if there is time at the end. Um, but that is definitely a topic I want to get into at some point because I know a lot about it these days as it emerges. Okay, so we talked about long form articles and did I, you know, so interviews. So your interviews are another way that you can quickly generate uh, information here. Um, so these interviews are a, they can be a minimum of three questions or a max of maybe 14. Like you don't want it to be super, super long, but it kind of depends on who you're interviewing. Um, but again, this is another opportunity to bring variety and value to your blog posts um, without uh, having to spend hours and hours and hours. Like you could just talk to somebody for five minutes and write down everything that they say, or even have AI do that for you to write, write it down, edit it and post it. And the format can be flexible. This can be written. It can be recorded aloud. It could be a short video that you post with the transcript. Uh, if you have videos, always, always, I'm writing this down because it's important, always post a transcript and captions that will make your blogs super accessible and SEO loves it. Uh, and then uh, you, this definitely adds ethos and credibility. Outside folks, like say I, I, I interviewed my vet, uh, they can link to my blog post. And if I have a vet saying, yes, this person like actually knows what she's talking about when we're talking about birds, 
um, that adds ethos and credibility to you and creates links in other parts of the internet. Search engines love it when other websites link to your post. Definitely boosts that. So let's go ahead and brainstorm and maybe we will do the chat GPT thing next or on Friday. But think about who might you interview for three questions? Who might you interview for 15 questions? Who might you interview at all? Um, and then would you rather have this be written, a video, or a podcast? Take a minute and a half and generate some ideas. Take this and I'm going to set our timer and go. Finish the question that you are on. Well, not the question, but the, <laughs> the sentence. So your last one, and I'm going to leave a little bit of time to just talk about like scheduling posts and time management. So the last one that we're going to take a minute and a half for are what other forms of blog content might you want to write? So these can be listicles, which are things like 10 things to bring, not that you can see it because my AI is on the way, 10 things to bring on the road to keep your parrot happy, right? They're, they're lists of like 10 things, five things, two things. They can be super short. They can be just three things to get those 300 words, right? Um, or there's letters. Like there was one that I wrote that was an open letter to my new rescue parrot that's on my old blog. Um, but it was just, it was a letter to my parrot to, to just tell her all the things that I would hope that other people would consider uh, when they rescue an, an elderly parrot. So yeah, so just think about other forms of content. If there's any that you can come up with, drop them in the chat. But for right now, um, definitely think about what other forms of blog content might you want to write. So take a minute and a half for there. And again, listicles are three to 10 things that you might not know about X. Uh, letters are just letters to, to your audience or about a random thing. A letter to the Bird Street Bistro people. <laughs> A letter to the people who make my birds food. Those are definitely definitely good types of content. So minute and a half and go. Goodness sake.
finish the, uh, <laughs> the one that you're on. And we've got two minutes left. So I just wanted to talk very briefly about scheduling, right? So I hope that this kind of answers the question, hey, how do I write so much so often? Like I want to write this every week, but how do I do that? So one thing that you may not be aware of, especially if you're brand new, um, is that you have the option in your WordPress dashboard to schedule posts ahead of time. So let's say you have two hours and you're like, wow, like I don't really want to write 500 to 1,000 page posts every single week. What you can do if you go to posts, add new, here's, this is a brand new thing, you can write a post about any single thing or more in here. So one thing that you can do for consistency is these, these micro blogs, um, these short form articles, these 150 to 300 words or less, you could take two hours and write 150 to 300 word posts. Um, you just, you polish it, write it just as you would, you know, do everything in the post settings. But what you can do here is once you have those done and written, you uh, select your settings up here, select post, publish, change this from immediately to whatever day you want. So next week, um, and this time is set uh, to whatever is in your settings. So you will have to update that, but you can schedule this post. So if I go back to my dashboard now, you can see that this is scheduled and it'll tell you when it's scheduled to post on. So you can take two hours, write a lot of content, interview people. Just if you've got two hours and it's only going to be this week and the rest of your three months is going to be just wild with events, use this to keep that publishing consistently. And then when you find time throughout, you can come in and either change when a post is scheduled to be later or just let it post and write additional content. So we're going to end with, with that today. Um, just to, to help you with that, that can help you create a posting calendar. And yeah, we, y'all did a really good job today. Thank you for your time and your thoughts. We have, uh, we, I think what we'll do is we'll get into chat GPT next week. So I'm going to stop the recording now and just give people just a couple more minutes for, for questions if they have them. And yeah, so thank you for your time and I want to respect that. So if you want to stick around, great, but otherwise, uh, yeah, have a great one.